Welcome my friends, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and today we begin our campaign in TNO, the last series of Europe, playing as SS Odenstadt Burgundy. Oh, Burgund. If you'd like to read about uh, <clears throat> the Burgundstadt, please go right ahead, and there's the next one. So, the reason I'm playing Burgundy right now, at least at the time of this recording, is because I've heard that they might eventually be getting a remake, or a rework, maybe a rework, not a remake, but a rework. So, that's why I want to play as them before anything might happen to the tree, or just the nation as it is, but unter der schwarzen Sonne, there's no hope under the black sun. The Oldenstadt was not founded as a nation, but as a distraction. Our former leader hoped that due to the rebellious nature of the French and Belgians, the <clears throat> Reichsdaddies SS would be kept too busy trying to pacify the natives instead of consolidating his influence within the Reich. How ironic it was that the, the big daddy himself would underestimate the resourcefulness of the Aryan mind. The Odenstadt has served as a perfect place for us to prepare, away from the prying eyes of Germania. And when we step into their view again, it will shake them to their core. And I've already set things up mostly off-screen, and I didn't realize, like, I, I was wondering where some of the German generals went. So we have Otto Skolzeny. Skolzeny here? So, I didn't realize that we had... Otto was under Mr. <clears throat> Himmley. Under Himmley. So that's actually really cool, but the old generals adieu. General Karl Heinrich von Stülpnagel stood out of the window of his limousine, watching Ost Paris shrink further and further into his distance. He had spent 20 years in the city, first as a head of the German military occupation, then in, in a nebulously defined advisory position for the collaborator government. Either way, his job had remained the same, keep the Teutonic boot pressed on the Gaelic neck. It was a job that he had performed admirably, but it gnawed away at him over the decades. The orders he signed, the reprisal killings against resistance members of hometowns, the cattle cars full of people who would never return. There was much that he was willing to stomach for the sake of his Vaterland, but sometimes it crossed the line. But there were other aspects of his duty that he carried out, carried out with pride. When the regime was reorganized and Himmler was appointed as his superior, Karl Heinrich tried his dondest to keep the SS on a short leash, but everyone he trusted in the administration was suddenly demoted, arrested, on suspicious charges, or suffered a tragic accident. His power in the Parisian bureaucracy waned, and he became little more than an informant. Passing along Himmler's latest doings to Germania now, he could no longer do even that, truth be told. He should have been feeling relief that it was no longer his burden to stare into that abyss every day, but all he felt was terror at the thought of what they will do with no one watching. He will not be missed. A wise leader. The Reichsführer SS is dismissed by his political rivals as the craziest man in uniform when in reality he is the last sane man in the Reich. How could the people not realize that their leaders have abandoned national daddyism and that there is no other man fit to take up the cause? Thankfully, the Reichsführer SS has not spent years fiddling while Germania burns. The time will soon come when all is well and order is restored to Europe. So, I do let you know, I don't know everything about Oldenstadt Bogen, and actually, I'll probably go need some help, especially when I see stuff like this. The Global Planner, which isn't too bad, just because, if you didn't know, spoiler alert, we caused a lot of the world's mayhem here, but what I'm really talking about is the domestic situation, especially with skilled labor, <clears throat> some involuntary mandatory labor from some other people, so, and the loyalty of the SS legions and the Sisha Heights Polizei off uh, officers and such like that, however, I do know, like what it says here, um, as a baseline, one guard can manage two workers, so one to two is not a bad ratio, so... So far, they're loyal to us, but... Oh, we could probably just click on them. Okay, that's good. A wise leader, very good, very good. So, um... Available skilled labors. Police to worker ratio, two, two, two... It's, it, I probably shouldn't, like, probably touch this too much for now, but I just want to make sure that we always have enough loyalty. Hmm. And I do know a little bit about spoilers for later on. So, I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, so, with this one, with the domestic situation, do we get more... If we just put, you know... The labor force in places, do they just build things automatically? I don't think so, right? So, <clears throat> but framing in context, we'll come back to this. As an important matter of state, presentation is everything. Something as major as a lavish award ceremony or prominent general can have just as much of a political ramification as something as minor as the seating arrangements at a state dinner. And there's no exception when it comes to the humble frame photo. For two decades, official state portraits of the Führer have been ubiquitous. Whether it was a young dynamic firebrand of the 30s or the gracefully aging conqueror of the early 50s, millions of blue eyes have loomed over the classrooms, offices, and sitting out rooms of the Reich. And within the Oldenstadt's borders, they have always been accompanied by a smaller, more tasteful black and white photo portrait of the Reichsführer SS, all a way to exalt himself while remaining courteous and aware of his subservience. 
subservience. But no longer, over the weekend, every SS officer in the olden shot received a new portrait. It was a painting of the Reichsführer SS, in full regalia, with a peaked cap and overcoat and in color no less, clearly meant to mimic his Führer. It was the exact same size, and even more shockingly, was ordered to be hung at the exact same height as a portrait of Hitler. The members of the SS unflinchingly compiled or complied with this order, while the few dignitaries were still representing the Reich in Ost Paris quietly tutooed the move. Word would surely make its way back to Germania, and the Führer would rave about how this is proof Himmler was plotting against him, but what would be done about it? After all, who would risk a civil war over a few lithographs? The writing is literally on the wall. Appears a loyal army. Hitler's first mistake in the creation of the Orden Shah was allowing the Reichsführer SS to recruit as many of his followers as he pleased. To the degenerates twisting the Führer's ear, this seemed like a perfect idea. No more so-called fanatics marching past their homes, r reminding them of the values that they failed to uphold, threatening to end the decadent Zan Zanadu they had built up for themselves, however. It proved to be nothing but a boon for the fledging Orden Shah. The bureaucracy in Gedarme, once filled with French collaborators of dubious loyalty, were replaced by legions of experienced, efficient, and above all else, dedicated men. They knew how to run a state, slaughter pars partisans, and fight in the harshest conditions. And a day may soon come when they have to fight again. Oh, I hope they, I hope they will. And do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. A pure race. The Aryan race. It teeters on the brink of catastrophe. The gross Deutsches Reich, their ancestral and spiritual homes were rife with decadence and corruption. They believed that their status as the master race, rather than giving them the duty to be industrious, instead exempts them from all labor. They lounge about in palatial mansions, letting their minds rot and their bodies grow soft. Those in the olden shot, however, shall not succumb to such degeneracy. They understand the value of work, the importance of ideology, and above all, duty <clears throat> to the people. Initiation. The drums beat. Harder. But the drums beat in the darkness as the SS cadets marched onto the parade ground, oh, their only light being the torches surrounding the perimeter. There was an electricity in the air, and every one of them could feel it. This was the culmination of their training in the moment they had been waiting for, the moment where they would no longer be boys under the tutelage of the Reich, but to the men of the Waffen SS. A bugle call rang out, and a brass band played SS Marchiette in a fine Deslan. As flags bearing swastikas, Sigruns, black suns, and all sorts of Aryan symbols were carried onto the stage. When that was done, the moment they were waiting for began, they crisply raised their right hands into salutes and recited the words they had spent weeks memorizing. I swear to God this holy oath that I shall be eternally obedient to the guide and savior of the Aryan race, Heinrich Himmler, Reichsführer SS, and that at all times I will gladly give my life in the name of blood, race, and fatherland. Their oath complete, and the band struck up once again, playing the host of Vessel lead at this time. It could hardly be seen in the dim, flickering light, but every single soldier in the parade ground was greeting from ear to ear, Mein Era Heis Tro. Or Troia. Uh, do they, I don't think Himmler believes in God, but okay. At least it capitalized the gene God, but I don't think they believe in God. But who am I? I'm not a dev. The last hope for Germania, an, an effeminate liberal democracy, is the idea of government overthrow is treated as a weapon of last resort. Those who slavery at the thought of defending their so-called rights from tyranny only insist that they will act when so many laws are violated, or so many parties are banned, or so many men are arrested. It is a cover for their weakness, an excuse for them to say, not now. The time is not yet right. Whatever, someone asks them to show a backbone. The Aryan, however, does not wait. He sees the opportunity for power, and he seizes it with as much, much force as he can muster. He does not fear to tear down the rotten old structure and rebuild it in his image. He does not let betrayal or exile dampen his will. He marches in, pushes aside all those who stand in his way, and writes what is wrong permanently, from cradle to grave. Ah, I remember this one. Taki Senpai was reading, t telling me about this one. He was lay in the hospital bed, trying her best to regain her strength, even though it was her third child. The pain of labor never got any less difficult. But the worst was behind her, and soon she could bring her little bundle of joy home with her. She and her husband were split between naming the boy. They knew so much Lars or Siegfried, they ultimately decided that they would have to wait to see him and choose which one they felt was suitable to them. They just walked in carrying clipboard, Frau Hilda Müller. Please fill this out, she wrote the recited as she thrust the clipboard into Hilda's lap. Hilda <clears throat> picked up the clipboard and looked at the paper on top. Notice of death, your boy had visible signs of Mongolism and was euthanized per the law for the prevention of genetically diseased offspring of 1933. We did a name for the forms. Hilda was being overwhelmed by emotions, but she was able to hold back tears long enough to choke out. Of, of course, before, for our race, she picked up the pen and shakily scrawled Lars in for the name of the deceased because she didn't know if she could stay composed long enough to write all nine letters of the name Sigrid. The nurse snatched back up the clipboard and strode out of the room, slamming the door shut behind her. Alone at last, Hilda could give into her grief and sob undisturbed. One death is a tragedy. One million deaths are statistic. I remember that one. That's an old meme. Not abortion, but it is what it is. Hey, look at this. Secondary schooling. A blade in the dark, my friends. I do know that Taki Senpai did play Brooklyn D a while ago, but... Poverty slowly getting worse, but where we're headed, poverty doesn't really concern me too much. But, a blade in the dark. 
From the first day he settled in Ospias, the Axfer asked us to spend his days mapping the long road that would lead him back to Germania, and the time had come for the journey to begin. It had taken months of planning. The task at hand was twofold. Not only did the Sischeheitsdienst <clears throat> have to smuggle a foreign na national into Germania, but also had to make sure he did so without resisting. The SD were experienced in planning spies, but usually those spies wanted to be there, thankfully. As the agents had captured the poor Saps family, and a few recordings of their interrogation were sure enough to keep him compliant. He was sent over with nothing but some forged credentials, a non booth pistol, and a cyanide pill. In no pretense of ever returning, his handlers made it very clear that if the next day's paper said anything other than the assassin was killed while being apprehended, then his wife and children would suffer a slow and excruciating end. It would have to happen during the moon landing, when the eyes were of every man, woman, and child in the Reich, and every soldier, sentry, and officer would be glued to their TV sets. And... As the capsule hurled towards the moon, so did destiny hurl towards the Reich. <clears throat> the Bugandusha. As this were on high alert, the Deutsche and SS were silently preparing to mobilize, and the secondary waves of murders were planned. Everything was coming together, and now all the Reich's fear SS could do was wait to see it unfold the next day. They slept and dreamt of triumph. An assassin strikes a Hitler. Who could do such a thing? Oh my goodness. Oh my giddy aunt. Oh no, no, no. Death. Felschlag. The Reich's for SS sat at his desk, giddy with excitement. He had uncharacteristically taken a short or shot the schnapps to help settle his nerves, but he dared not take another one. He did not want to miss a moment of it. The door flew open, and a small car drove clearly flustered officers bursting with newspapers in their hands. My Reich's fear. He eagerly snatched a copy of the Volkische Beobachte from his hands, turning to the front page. It was dominated by a black and white port portrait of the wizened Fuhrer and a photograph of the Volkshalle. Its interest is cordoned off by the Wehrmacht as paramedics ran inside in bold black letters that read. Attempt on the Fuhrer's life. Wait, attempt. The assassin failed, the Ossifer gasped. Hitler still lives. The Reich's for SS body froze, and it seemed like time to stand still. No, 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 no. Not after this, not during what was supposed to be his hour of triumph. His shock was soon replaced by a churning, fiery cauldron of rage, which violently exploded in a tirade of legendary proportions. Himmler, cursing at the inept assassin, the Japanese race, the ever menacing Jew, the decrepit Fuhrer, his darnable personal guard, and every god he could name. When his rant ended, he slumped back into his chair, his energy spent for the first seven years. Himmler felt hopelessly and utterly lost. What to do? What to do? A change in plan, my friend. Something had gone terribly wrong. Not only does Himmler still breathe, or Hitler still breathe, but he's painfully aware of his own mortality. Someone will soon receive his blessing as the official successor to the office of the Führer, and will undoubtedly have his supporters in the Reich, on the government, and the Wehrmacht, on high alert if the Reich's Führer SS attempts to assert his power again. The rotary gaining power of such a broken Reich must be recalculated. It may take longer than initially anticipated, but it shall be ironclad and leave nothing to chance. Time to call a meeting. A new goals, which get more political power, less stability, and less war support, which is okay. Let's see. What is it? Refocus the state? Reduce supply consumption. Ooh. I require monthly supplies. Oh, Global plan Puma. Oh, what is this one? It's locked. Cannot be until certain conditions are met. We need a lot more infantry equipment and support equipment. At least 100 political power. Oh, my goodness. Oh man, so you can, the AI for Burgundy cannot fail, but as a player, we can fail this. So we need more political power, we need more infantry equipment, and support equipment. Uh, I wanted to make tanks, but okay, well, let's boost this up a little way more then. Um, one is nice for all these things, other than that, uh, I'd like to have these, but whatever. Oh, we have an agent. Alright, Volman, oh boy. That would not be very good for us then. And invest monthly stuff. Cost 200 workers and 60 million dollars each month. Political and industry financially. 200 workers. More supplies. Uh, how many supplies do we have? Does it tell us how much supplies we have? I don't think it tells us how many supplies we have. Increase your monthly arm sales. Purchase one supply at the start of each month, costing a lot of dollars, equipment, and support equipment. Um, it's monthly politically. Invest monthly politically and with arm sales. Um, automatically purchase one supply of each month. 20 PP and 60 million dollars. We could try that, I guess. Now let's get one of them, right? We need, we're going to need more supplies regardless. 200 workers? That's a lot of PP. I don't know if we can spend that much PP real, excuse me, realistically. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe we want to put more police officers here. We have a, plenty of police officers in reserve, so there you go. That should be enough, right? Or... Oh, transfer... Uh, mm, there you go. That should be more than enough, right? So, then we'll do... Admit no loyalty. Expand Project Gallahorn, which I kind of want to do. Yeah, that'd be kind of nice. 
I bet no fault. Let's do that one. There are those who, if they knew the truth of the assassination attempt, would use it to defame the Reichsfuhrer SS as a cowardly weakling professing a failed ideology. They could be no further from the truth. The Reichsfuhrer SS fully understands the meaning of National Socialism, and the so-called ideologues in Germany continue to vomit out degenerate lies in place of sound theory. There is no such thing as a flaw in Nazism, only a flaw in the rights implementing it. And the Aryan race has many flaws that must, must, must be expunged. Followed up with... Oh, camps! Oh, yeah, it's construction speed? Oh, I love, I love camps. I mean, construction speed, not the whole god, no. Um, um, construction speed, yes. Call upon the... Ooh, a butcher. Oh, yeah, okay, something about... Let's expand the camps. A powerful man cannot climb his way to the top without making many, many enemies. Their rivals within the bureaucracy constantly conniving to further their own ends at the expense of the folk. Their dissenters and rumor mongers preferring to spread lies and denounce the truths of National Socialism. They're also spies and saboteurs undermining the Aryan race at every turn to aid their Semitic masters. These vermin, like any other, shall be tracked down and caught, and that means that we need, will need more places to put them all. Preliminary locations in the Alps will be scattered due to their proximity to new construction sites and the harshness of the climate as a determinant for escape. Paying a house call. The officer rapped on the door three times with usual military precision, waiting patiently for someone to answer, but nobody did. They were smart enough to figure that a van outside their home and a large group of un uniformed men knocking at their door were bad news. The officer patiently waited for a few more moments before drawing his pistol and kicking the door in. He and his fellow Gestapo officers then began clearing the house room by room. The drawing room and the dining room were clear. Kitchen was too. Though it seemed like someone had thoroughly burned a small pile of papers in the sink. Now, as it proceeded up the stairs to the second floor, there were several gunshots echoed throughout the hallway. The officers took cover, re-emerging when the firing stopped. They arrived at their master bedroom and found their target, an SS captain suspected of Francophilia. After objecting to the labor conditions and ignored Colin Mines, he and his wife both lay in the corner of the room, holes in their heads, and they vaulted on the floor. Murder-suicide, likely to avoid being captured. The officers sighed, <sighs> disappointed that he'd not be spending the rest of the night extracting valuable intelligence from the now-dead man. Instead, they'd have to sort through paperwork and deal with his boss. One less degenerate walking among the errands, though. So problems have a way of solving themselves. How about we double our re-education efforts? Re-education is good, especially the one, you know, the stuff that we preach to the people. There are many fine Aryan youths in the Orden Strat who are genetically pure, but their minds have unfortunately been trained or tainted by the teachings of degenerate parents or educators. It is too late for the generator that preceded them, but there is still hope for them to be molded into the image of the ideal Aryan man and woman. The positive values of national daddyism must be reinforced and the negative values of liberalism, leftism, or judeo cosmopolitan cosmopolitan traditionalism must be eradicated. Hopefully by the time they reach adulthood, they may serve the ordinance shot with pride. You must do everything with pride, because if not, why do it? Oh, look, invest politically and financially. That's not bad. Um, Go, go and do that. At least we get some more supplies. Do, do we get to see any current active plans? We don't have anything yet. Oh, actually, I should have saved that. Uh, we need more infantry equipment and support equipment, which is... No, go ahead. Um, how much do we have? We have minus 1,500. Are we trading anything? Don't even trade anything. There you go. Now, that's, that's a little... That's actually quite a bit better. Holy cow. Uh, support equipment. Actually, we have a small surplus, so this is going along. Okay. Oh, we can't do that. Oh, we need Project Gallahorn first. Okay. In war, every defeat is due to human error. Inability to properly anticipate the enemy and failure to prepare oneself has doomed dozens of kings and conquerors to the duration to the despot of history. How we, however, will not be taken unaware. On the first days of the Oldenstadt, the S Reichsführer SS ordered the development of a nuclear early warning program called Vo Voltan. It was ultimately scrapped, but its infrastructure and resources can be reused for a greater purpose, not as a watcher, but as a harbinger. I ah, love it. So, I'm not exactly sure what... I don't know if we need to do all these. And is there a specific order we need to do? Maybe? So, Condor. Um, what does this one do? I forget exactly what these ones are. We need more supplies, too, so... Hmm. The ultimate salvation. For years now. The Axiom SS has closely monitored the progress of our nuclear arms program. Mass amounts of material manpower have been smuggled and funneled into the country to make this dream a reality. The costs have been great. Thousands of slave laborers have died building the facilities as our scientists worked day and night to refine their precious uranium. <coughs> My apologies. Keeping such a massive of a project secret from the rest of the world, and Germany in particular, have been almost as difficult as developing the weapon themselves. Secrecy has been of the utmost importance, as for if this were to be exposed to the world, the consequences would have been catastrophic. Our efforts are finally coming to fruition. Soon, the world is shaking their boots when they discover that Oldenstadt is no longer defenseless, and no longer will the Reich hold nuclear destruction over our heads. We will forge our own path, following the path laid out by the Reichsführer as SSS. We will see his plan carried out, and at any cost, and there will be no interruptions at home by foreign powers. Soon, we shall be... <clears throat> Untouchable. Uh oh, look at that. What is this? 
Um, they're... Why are they... Oh, they're loyal to the Langemach. Well, that's not good. How about over here? They're loyal to Charlemagne. I don't like that. How do we increase loyalty then? Oh, state of the SS. Favor manufacturing and construction. Oh, we need more skilled uh, workers. Oh, we need more laborers in our reserve, huh? That's kind of cool. Um, we might need more. We're probably going to need more police here. So, Or we can just remove the laborers. And we increase that. There you go. So that should balance it out. So that's not bad. Is there... Would it be worth it to maybe invest more slaves into each area, maybe? Maybe not. Means to an end, yes, please. The Olden Shah has one purpose and one purpose alone. We are the body that enforces the Reichsfear SS as well, and nothing more, nothing less. Our purpose is not to construct a nation state, nor is it to alienate the natives. The Reichsfear SS vision is one far grander than establishing a single enclave of racial purity atop a Gaelic cesspit. And after all, the local vermin may have a role in its fulfillment. That'd be quite good, would it not? Quite good. And Project Gallahorn. Oh boy, the ultimate deterrent. Nuclear program, that'd be good to do. Oh, can we not do it yet? Oh, we can't do it yet. Oh, that sucks. The ultimate deterrent, then. There's one weapon that the po great powers of the world fear, one weapon that can cow the mighty American military into submission, one weapon that can undo God's creation, the atomic bomb. It's a tool to ensure survival, which means it is a tool to guarantee our triumph. We must acquire one of these weapons for ourselves to ensure that the degenerates plotting in Germania do not think us able to be defeated in one fell swoop. If they know that we can turn their precious mansions and brothels into ash with the push of a button, they'll think twice before engaging. Very good. And here are the national spirits. The shadow state, which is very nice. Uh, the purge of the rot, which is not very good. Uh, we have the three realms, not bad. As well as adjusting to the new goals. Okay. As well as Project Gallahorn. Not bad. Not bad, not bad, not bad. And so we got to do some of these projects first. So, Oh, why are they loyal to these guys? How do we increase loyalty? Care has to be exercised, yes. Uh, um... Hmm. I don't know, man. I'm not really sure how to keep these guys loyal, so... The black market raid? Oh, boy. The men spoke in hushed tones, hats pulled low, and jackets and clutched tightly to their bodies. Even though they were surely they had been followed by anyone, they could never take, shake the feeling that they were being watched. That was the worst part about those darn SS thugs, at least under the Wehrmacht. A man could feel safe when he was indoors. Now, nobody felt like they were truly alone, even in the privacy of their own homes. Let alone surrounded by two dozen others, shady men making deals of their own. It was unnerving, to say the least. The man in the gray hat extinguished his cigarette, glancing around furtively as he dropped the butt of the, to the ground. Do you have it? The man in the brown coat nodded, pulling a thin package wrapped in brown paper and twine. I expect the rest of your payment next Sunday. As he handed it off, the door suddenly burst open. Men in black uniforms and gray stahlhelms fled into the building, and some machine guns aimed at the crowd before them. Many of the men in the building dropped to their knees, hands behind their heads in grim silence. A couple of others frantically swallowed pills or the barrels of their pistols, preferring a swift end to whatever would await them in the camps. A couple tried to return fire, only to swiftly be cut down by the soldiers. Eighteen men were taken into custody for subversive activities with the five dead. Three by suicide and two while resisting arrest. A successful raid for the SS, all in all. The soldiers smiled as the men were loaded into the black vans, taking pride in having made the street a bit cleaner. The people of Ausp can sleep a bit easier tonight. Now, I don't know which one we want to do first. Condor? Probably Condor. Let's try that one. Global plan activated. Secret authorized eyes only. Commander will proceed with the plan. The Reich's has authorized the action to, per to act against our enemy. Read the given materials inside and decide as you see fit our next course of action for the cause. SS Allball Group on Führer Heinrich Müller. Time to take a look and project the next move. Completing national focuses and enacted decisions will progress our agenda considerably. Global plan Condor. Oh, it's a Iberian uh, Union one. Oh, that's right. Okay. So, do we have anything unlocked for them, then? Ah. Up Global Plan Condor. Okay. Oh, maybe I should have not done that one yet. Exploit their arrogance. Morocco flame. Oh, maybe that was a bad idea to do this early. The Iberian Peninsula has taken the greatness of its original colonization at the hands of Germanic people and completely thrown into the vat of decadence, corruption, and vanity, all strewn together in one un unitedly broken land of terror, death, and impurity. The two reigning dictators, Captain General Francisco Franco, the Hispanics, and Antonio de Oliveira, Salazar, the Portuguese, run each other around in a political circle, broadcasting incompetence towards a broken and traitorous union. I have only come together to restrict and disrupt the Vatalan. However, while Franco and Salazar fail, we shall rise as the Iberian Peninsula shall become the perfect staging ground for a conflict on all sides, as untold death and destruction climbs whilst the ideals of the Iberians die. And I know we can only have one planet at a time, so yeah. State? Oh, favor nuclear spending? Oh, that's not bad. That costs money, but who cares? Ser but seriously, how do we increase loyalty here? I have no idea. Um, 
it seems like everything's pretty much well balanced here. Do we need more? Uh, how much more laborers do we get every month? Does it say we get 20 more s police guys? But I oh, this is just flipped to blue. That's not good. Oh, police. We need more police here then. There you go. That's questionable. Huh, okay. Josiah cuts us off. For decades, Josiah's du Valdeck of Un Permont has served the SS loyalty and has used his recent promotion in the, of, to Reich's Commissar of Caucasus to funnel Reich's marks and resources to Alden Schutt's budget. Several within the Sisha Heights deans have called Josiah's mental stability into question in recent years, but were dissuaded by the Reich's fear SS insistence that Josiah was devoted as, ev as ever. However, the skeptics were proven right today. When Josiah's regular monetary deposit did not arrive, usual back channel communications were utterly silent. People began to suspect the worst until Alicia Heitzstein's spy was able to smuggle out a report. Josiah's had, in an fit of rage, abandoned the Reichsphere SS, apparently. He organized a lavish parade for an anticipated safe visit from the Reichsphere SS, but neglected to confirm whether his guests of honor could actually attend, bizarrely, believing to be this to be a betrayal. Josiah then gave a speech denouncing the Oldenstadt as a callous monster and began purging the Kalkasisha SS of all men not loyal to himself. It will take some time for the Heights deans to rebel the spy network and organize a retaliation, but the concerns of the budget are more pressing. Josiah's slush fund was a valuable boon to the Oldenstadt's coffers, and his absence will be painfully felt in the bureaucracy. The SS main economic administrative office shall be tasked with finding a stopgap method of balancing the budget, as well as a long-term alternative source of income. Get Paul on the line! And I don't see any decisions here for anything here. It's for more uh, stuff like this, but let's see. Oh, man, that's a lot of, uh, down here. That's a lot of labors to, compared to the amount of police we have. That's a little bit. Actually, we can do that more. Okay, there you go. That's good enough. Um, wow, we need more police here too. Holy crud! Ah, that's, that's good enough. Two to one. That's good. Uh, we need more police officers here. That's good enough for now. Uh, let's see. Good enough. Actually, you could probably increase this too. Oh, do we not have any more? Does this cost anything? It might cost stuff. And here we need way more police officers. Wow, that's really bad. Hmm, well, that's roughly good enough. 5,000. Uh, oh, you could probably put more slaves here, too. Uh, I guess we're out. Oh, we have 550 skilled laborers in reserve. Okay. Uh, can we put any more slaves here? The laborers? They're laborers, not slaves. Well, they, base, uh, they might as well be. Cool. Sorry, I, I, I don't know. Global Plant Condor. So we can't do any of the rest of these because I think we have to get other stuff done first, probably. So... I'm not sure if it's worth doing this one yet. I kind of do admit no loyalty. Unpleasant findings. Oswald Pohl rapped sharply on the Reichsfeer SS's doors three times, as he always did, and stepped inside. The Reichsfeer SS sat there at his desk, shuffling some papers out of the way. Upon seeing his old friend, he stood up and gave a subdued smile on Kurt. Not arguably the most warmth he showed any of his colleagues. Ah... Oswald, it's good to see you. I trust you have been the report, or we had the report on how to adjust our budget in the wake of Josiah's indiscretion. Paul swallowed nervously, finding his throat drier than the Sahara. Good to see you too, Rexfear SS. I have run through the numbers, and <clears throat> he choked up for a bit. This was the part he dreaded most, and there's no way to, re to balance the budget. The Rexfear SS's brow rose incredulously. If I did not believe it, I would not be telling you. The numbers speak for themselves. Even if we received the money and resources from Josiah's black budget, it would still only delay the inevitable. Every year, every month, you add more and more items to the budget, but the sources of income continue to shrink. There are no French assets left to expropriate. There are no more private German businesses to tax, and there's no sale of consumer goods whatsoever. I've worked with you for decades, Heinrich. Paul suddenly cursed himself for lapsing into such informality. But this is beyond my capability. Telling me to make this work is telling like a general to win a war with an army of empty uniforms. We need immediate and drastic reforms in order to keep this thing from spiraling out of control by the end of the decade. Otherwise, you'll face an economic catastrophe within the next to 20, 10 to 25 years. I'll begin drafting a proposal for your consideration post-haste. Good, good, the Reich's fear SS replied. Dismiss. As he watched Pohl salute and walk out of the room, he almost felt a pang of pity for the poor man, over 30 years of loyal service, all pissed away in a moment of cowardice. He picked up the phone and endowed the Sischerheitsdienst, and then began considering who in the WVHA could use a promotion. A shame, really. What a shame. The ultimate salvation means to an end... Admit no loyalty. I do want to get to awaiting the Vanenkrieg, but we'll see what happens. Uh, yes, Operation Condor. Exploit them. Weaponize Portuguese idiocracy. Or idiocy. I'll join opportunity. 
I want to exploit Spanish arrogance. For as long as the chronicles of history have been foretold, the Spaniards have been a people of extreme vanity and pride, committing the highest sins they could profess and the most darnably beloved Catholic teachings. Believing themselves to be of the most civilized and orderly people, the Spanish have continuously served as a front to Germanism through the hoarding of Aryan gold and treasures, a disgustingly corrupt concern over their phenotype and architecture and artistry, and through the inbreeding of Spanish kings for centuries. Their twisted and warped minds shall be perfect to instigate violence from within, as a concern to the Reich's dam across Gibraltar shall spell the perfect place for potential conflict with the Portuguese. All it takes is a few sticks and stones to get these barbarians to light a fire. The instability of I Iberia. Iberia is a bastard state. This is certainly true of its most recent incarnation, as a patchwork of two governments united only by the desire to hold off the influences of the Reich. But it has been this way for a very long time. The peninsula has never known Aryan rule, having been settled by lesser peoples of southern Europe. Greeks, Phoenicians, L Lusitanians, and more. All those people became a stew of new languages and nations, from the savage Moors to the bizarre Basques. And this is to say nothing of the centuries of the vile Jewish influence. Altogether, Iberia is a patchwork of unfair peoples that should be never become one unified power. But this is also an opportunity for us. Many of the people, Basque, Catalan, Asturian, Galician, seek independence from the central government. Moreover, the Iberian state occupies a unique position on the world stage. Its economy has been wrecked by the Gibraltar Dam, but also finds itself in control of the thing. It's a sizable overseas colonial empire. In short, there's a great deal of room to further our ambitions through the strange and pure amalgamation that is the Iberian Union. The modus scos will fall. Alright, so with the extra political power, it looks like we cannot activate anything else while we have something else. Yeah. Um. Okay, so the cooldown is currently un is unlocked. Um, if that's the case, cancel this? No, we don't want to cancel it yet. One supply costing PP, instrument equipment, and support. That's a lot of support equipment. How much support equipment do we have? 200, that's quite a bit. How many guns do we have, actually? We have, oh, more than enough for now. That's good. Uh, 200 workers, $60 million. That's fine. Just do that one. And workers, do that one too. And then, I don't know how much supplies we're going to need, so. 300, arm sales. I'll do that one too. Why not? Can we bribe loyalty? I think we could probably do that one, right? 5% construction speed risk really isn't worth it. More nuclear stockpile change? Maybe do we do that one? Maybe? I have no idea. What is this? Oh, look at this. Invest we must have an active investigation to access the investigation GUI. Oh, so we get a new one. And we just research a lot of things. Nice. We went through research slots, which kind of sucks, but whatever. We'll get some more of that, and then we'll keep doing with industry stuff. Good, good, good. Resource extraction gain. Might as well. No rope. Might as well. I don't know. I'm not sure what to say about that, except might as well. Spend, cut. Oh, spend, 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 spend. I want to build, blah, 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 blah. Hey, look. Growth is actually going up by 0.1%, while the debt continues to go up, too, which is not very good, but hey, whatever. Spending, where we're headed, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Just keep making more civvies, though, for now, so we can build more, 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 more. Morocco of Flame. Skeletons in the closet. Well, let's do weaponized Portuguese idiocy. Deep within Lusitanian country, where the Portuguese fancy themselves as prideful masters of wind and sail, have sailed the seas in an attempt to establish themselves as superior travelers and conquerors and a different Iberian crown. A sad truth remains. The Portuguese are nothing but a sad, pitiful excuse for a misshapen, deformed version of the Spaniard. Having accomplished the greatest titles in history across the seas, while their pitiful country remains hopeless, thanks to their endless corruption, decadence, and incompetence. Kings and queens rose, but all that remains is a horrible state of impotence for all who would cause themselves Portuguese, or call themselves Portuguese, and the Odin Shad has come to understand the great level of potential in exploiting such inadequacies, inadequacies within the Union. And deep within Northern Africa, Salazar's fetishization of the Algerians may prove it as a prime location to begin. The arsenal of Iberian chaos. In order to achieve our aims in Iberia, we must take advantage of its fundamentally riven nature. There are numerous separatist organizations and terrorist groups which seek to bl bring down the Iberian Union. Basque, Catalans, Asturians, Galicians, Portuguese, Castilians, Communists, Rogue Fascists, Radical Catholics, and more. Lord and Shell will supply these groups with all the guns they could ever need, and return the profits. From these arms smuggling will bring liquid capital back to the Ordenstadt. Bodenly, our goal is not to make a profit. Our goal is to smash the Iberian Union. In order to create chaos and increase tensions throughout Europe, Iberia is da da doomed Nice. Oh, look, now they have more loyalty. Oh, maybe just making sure that each place has enough labors and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, we need more police officers here. 2,000. Uh, you can take away some of them for now. Increase it even more, because we only have so many police officers, and we're starting to run out, which is not good. Uh, I already did that recently, so let's see down here. Oh, boy. Alpenland. Decrease that a little bit more. And can we put some police, uh, some slaves somewhere else? Lower them a little bit more. There you go. Mm, numbers, numbers. What do the numbers mean? There you go. Let's 
It's all a numbers game. Go. We have plenty of skilled soldiers in reserve. Oh, sabotage a dam. On wrestling Gibraltar dam. I'd love to do that. Cool. So up next, Algerian opportunities. Light the spark. Let's do Algerian opportunities. Oh, BRG Algerian opportunities desk. Now I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be doing this one as fast as possible, or should we go back up here and do the Von Kree Cult the Butcher, which we should be able to do soon enough. The Enzing Hoffnung. Adjusting to the new goals. Oh, well, do we... I don't want to get rid of that. Because I want to keep that political power. I think that'd be really, really good if we could do that. There goes Guiana. Refocus the state. I think we're going to wait. So, and we can do that one stuff down there. But let's keep our political power for now. Global Plan Condor. Very nice. Very, very nice. And we have about five more days left. When's the next tech done? In seven days. That's not bad. Budget not looking great, but whatever. Hopefully nothing burns too hard until we need it to burn, so. Alright. Light the spark. Algerian opportunity to Portuguese palm. The Iberian Union is governed by two Cadillos. Francisco Franco and Antonio de Oliveira Salazar of the two. Salazar is the preferable option. While he may have been an economist by trade, Salazar is an imperialist and conservative at heart. He delves in strange ideas like Portuguese pluricontinentalism that will see the Union retain and expand its influence in Africa and perhaps even beyond, with Salazar holding the reins of power. Iberia would stagnate, more obsessed with retaining old glories and building a state for the modern world. More importantly, it would be a state that crosses the lines in order to achieve dominance over the new parts of the globe in Algeria, especially Salazar's Iberia, would push its luck perhaps too far, and then the only outcome would be instability. Let's see what he can do. Aw, oh, yeah. So we got all this stuff done, which is nice. Uh, engineering, we already have the research speed. That should be very good. Uh, let's grab some radar, because we can. And maybe focus a little bit more on our political power, or other stuff, like... Land auction. The next year is his birthday. There are few events celebrated in the Ordenstadts that resemble public holidays. Old Christian holidays like Christmas and Easter have been banned. As of any civic days honoring the French or Belgian history. The closest thing to it, however, would be have to be the Reichsfeuer's SS birthday. The streets are lined with the cheering civilians, almost entirely German settlers, interspersed with occasional French or Belgian collaborators. The avenues are filled with SS men, proud and strong. The true cream of the crop of the Aryan race. They carry high banners emblazoned with swastikas and Nordic runes, their torches burning brightest by the light of the day, and a brass band plays SS Machiot and a fine decimal line. The de facto anthem of the Ordenstadt, and the men march in perfect unison to the beat of the drums. The sound of celebration drifts over the river, much to the annoyance of the puppet, French puppet state leaders, much to the delight of the Reichsführer SS. Reichsführer SS. Although he is content with the scale of today's celebrations, he hopes that soon the sounds will be coming from both sides of the sign. Next year in West Paris. Hopefully. Very nice. Just say, how many supplies do we get every month? That would be really good to know. Oh, we have 10 supplies. Our base supply consumption is three per month. If war sport stability is less than fifty percent, we we'll require additional supplies. Oh crud! We've been pursuing a global plan for four months, increasing supply consumption by an additional one every month. Oh crap! We cannot run out of supplies. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not run out of supplies. So I don't want to spend any more political power, but actually this one is okay. I think get more supplies that way because we need to get more political power so we can do more stuff here. Because I would like to blow up the dam. Where is it? Oh, maybe it's back up north. Oh. Oh, ensure business support for Salazar. Oh, new month. New supply cost. Improve the businessman opinion of Salazar. Ensure regional support for Salazar. Well, you know what? We might just cancel one of these then. Since we got the other one. Uh, give me back my PP. Uh, that's two to workers. I don't... Workers? How are the workers doing? We have 150. Oh, we only have 150 in reserve? Ooh. Yeah, let's keep some of the workers. A million dollars, we don't care. Let's cancel them. Okay, let's keep it like that for now. And then, skeletons in the closet. Francisco Franco Bahomonda, Captain General of the Spanish Army, Navy, and Air Force, Supreme General of the Spanish State, and binary ruler and primary representative of the arrogant Spaniards within the Iberian Union as one of the two caudillos. There's truth to the statement that Franco has fought bitterly to climb to the position he finds himself in today, whether it currently merits him any success or not. However, such a climb does not come without a few rocks crumbling out of the way, taking form of thievery, embezzlement, and murder, all which could stain the esteemed crown atop the Spanish Caudillo's head. Such a step, shall, sh such a stain shall wipe across this Iberian Union as faith in Frank will be lost more and more as more and more secrets to his rise to power will be unveiled to the Spanish people who have loved him so dearly so. Oh well. We need more political power. We need more stability too. Smuggle arms to Algeria. That's not bad. I would like to do that, but I want to do some of this stuff too. Sabotage a dam. I would like to do that one. Hmm. And we gotta keep spending political. Uh, 
keep increasing civilian spending so we get even more political power. Oh, we got 51. Um, yeah, I want to sabotage a dam, probably. Businessmen. Improve the regional nationalists. Approving in. Hmm. Businessman. Actually, who's leading right now? If you look at the portrait, I think that will still tell you who's leading. Frank, go. So if we do this one, businessmen go up. Atrocities leak. Yeah, I'll do that one. Why not? Still by Franco, huh? Sever ties with our ex allies. Oh, yeah, the Trumpet is going to go bye bye. Good. And new month. How many supplies do we have right now? We have no supplies. Oh, crap. That is not good. Additional two every month. So maybe we should just rush this one, this plan, as fast as possible. I mean, I could be screwing up here quite a bit, but I want to get this stuff all done first, maybe. Light the spark. Uh, BRG, light the spark desk, or Morocco aflame. Morocco, the land of God, and the kingdom of the far west, here is upon the cultures of Africa, the Middle Eastern, and the Spaniard converge, all by which conflicting and melting into a uh, subhuman amalgamation of the culture, all while bearing the weight of the puppet ship under the iron grip of the Iberians due north. Yes, it is true that, so far, the native Moroccans and the Iberians have retained as cordial of relations as is possible under the slave and its mass from Harvard. The Iberians have been building a tower of kindling in the Moroccan state, which will be lit by the Orden Shots flame. Distress against the Iberian mass shall flourish, violence will spill out of every home and workplace, and blood of the Iberian Moroccans shall flood the streets. All the while, Every firefight, every standoff, and every massacre shall bear upon the Spanish hands the blame this disunited the Baron Union even further. Nice. Span, cut. Yeah, we're gonna need more PP, we're gonna need more supplies. Oh, that's not good. And best <sighs> gotta keep, keep some of that PP though. Oh, skeletons in the closet. Sixty million dollars. Yeah, no, that's fine. We need more supplies. Holy crud. It's three per month. Reveal Franco's secrets. Oh boy. Oh man. Oh, that's not good. So. Morocco Flame. We might as well do that one. That was actually really fast. Digging up the past, huh? Maybe get this one done as fast as possible. We have 700, 740 police officers. Black market trade increases. Uh, decrease that. Increase that. There you go. Here. Decrease labors. That's a little bit better. And then here, um, we have probably like no more officers really. We have plenty of extra people here. Increase it a little more. That should be good enough. All right, black market trading increases. So be it a minor setback. My next for SS, I bring news of another minor obstacle. Pursuant to our current global. Objectives, we've been focusing our resources on spreading the influence and disruptive capabilities of our agents worldwide. However, we've temporarily exhausted our ability to fund and arm these endeavors. This means that for the moment, our progress in this global plan will have to be halted until we've garnered the materials to proceed. Furthermore, this will disrupt our supply chain and unleash a small amount of political instability. Nonetheless, this should be not considered any significant threat to our long-term success, as will the area and unstoppable might of the assets will see us through as always. No doubt the next missive that reaches you will report of only of our endless march toward victory and the incredible accomplishments by our agents in the field against our tre treasonous foes. Heil Himmler. Oh boy, people could become more disillusioned. That's not good. Um, that's why I'm trying to cut these guys down, perhaps. There you go. That might be a little better. Uh, yeah, we have way... We need more, way more police here. Uh, 1,500. That's not enough. 1,500. Get a little lower. There you go. That's good enough. Yeah, there's so many bodies here. Over here. Uh, we do it once. That's fine. That's good. Oh, did it just reset again? What down here? Ron. Holy crud. We got plenty of reserve labor, so... Yeah. Cancel, 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 cancel. And then financially and industrially. Gain five supplies. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Give me all this, Give me all your slaves. Or labors. They're slavers, not slaves. Um, so now we have eight supplies. That's good. At least we got that for now. And then maybe light the spark. So we'll see what happens. I don't want that to happen. Well, happy 1963. Okay, so we really got to focus more on the war and help out Hadrish whenever things really do explode. So mm, we need more skilled laborers. So we need more skilled laborers and 750 things of support equipment, which is going to take a while to get. Yeah, that's not very good right now. Maybe we should just abandon making tanks and stuff like that. Motorized, we've got plenty enough for now. Uh, give me extra factories. We need extra factories right now. 
Guns are good. I don't want to lower guns too much, but go to three. And then we could reveal the stuff. Is it worth revealing the stuff? Cancel stuff. Give me those slaves. Uh, that's, that's good. Like we established, that's not bad. Morocco Flame, and we'll do Light the Spark. And see what happens. So that's not bad. And we'll keep going up this way. That's good. This group is good. This group here is... Pretty good. <clears throat> over here, Meow. Mew. Over here, 5,000. That's good. Actually, we could probably expand that a little bit more. Um, go by 50 if you want. Uh, 1,400. Uh, go by 50. 2,000. That's good enough. Uh, 2,600. That's good enough. And 3,000. 6,000. That's good enough. Give me all these labors. And then you guys up here. There you go. Cool. I want to keep these guys in reserve, so... A sabotage dam would be nice, but I want to invest... Oh, get more supplies. How many supplies do we have right now? We have eight still, which is good. But now we're probably going to drop a few more. How do we get more war support? We have three supplies. Boy, it looks like we just lost five. Stage an incident in Morocco. Tensions rise in Morocco. Oh, my goodness. Our debt will increase by quite a bit. Oh, this is not good. We have nuclear spending. Purchase stuff. Oh, we could buy stuff. Is that worth buying, like, all this extra stuff? Let me know in the comments below. So we have all of that stuff done. Is it, was it worth doing it right now? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, especially when, after I read your comments. Means to an end. Ultimate salvation. Let's do admit no loyalty. Only a slave will be content in a system where strong servants obey weak masters, and the Aryan race has thrown off their slave mentality. We shall not take orders from that dawdling fool in Germania, nor shall we acknowledge the legitimacy of a simpering, simpering cronies vying for the throne. The Reichs for Essence shall be our guiding light, and we shall scorn those who prefer to huddle beneath the shadows of... Lesser men, which is a good thing. And we have one day left. So, cool, but I'm going to end the episode here, perhaps, just because I want to see what you guys have, uh, about your opinion in, you know, comments below. I'm going to read more about Burgundy and make sure that we are successful. If things get really bad, I'll I'll move stuff around, I'll put it, and uh, make sure that we are ultimately successful in the end. But, if you enjoyed the episode, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we discover how we can continue to complete Global Plan Condor. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.